let us study classification of these changes means how the changes are classified basically these are classified depending upon whether they form a new substance or not so how are they they, they are classified based on whether a new substance is formed okay Whether the chemical substance is formed or not, it is classified into two categories. One is physical change, the other one is chemical change. Now let us understand what are physical changes and what are chemical changes. Okay, I would request everyone not to do this kind of activity. One of the activity which I am showing here, but keenly observe and if you are willing to do, you must do it under the guidance of your parents. Okay, now first one. Kicking a football. Now, if you have a ball over here and if you kick a football, what happens to it? It goes from here to there. Okay, from if we are kicking from here, it goes to the end of that corner or end of that room. Okay. When when this process is going on, is any new substance formed over here? No. Only the position has changed. From this position, it has went to that position. It has moved to that. Position. So, whether a new substance is formed or no? No. Okay, let us make no new substance formed. Okay, now, so here there is a no new substance has been formed. Now, take a paper. Okay, now let us take a paper. Now, if I tear this paper like this. Is any new substance formed apart from these two pieces of paper? If I tear paper, has a book formed? No. If I tear paper, has pencil formed? No. So there is again no new substance. So let us make a note. Again, no new substance. Now change in size with the use. Now we are using chalk to explain. So initially my chalk was of this size. When I started writing, it turned, it has changed into this size. When I am doing this, is any new substance formed? If I am using chalk, is my board formed? No. If I am using chalk in base form? No. So there is no new substance formed. Only this chalk dust has fallen down. Chalk dust is nothing but chalk. So there is no new substance. There is no new substance. Freezing of water. As we have already previously discussed, if I take out some ice cubes, if I put it in the hall or if I put it in normal room temperature, it turns into water. If I take this water and put it in the fridge, again it forms ice. Apart from ice, is any new substance formed? Apart from ice, is ice cream formed with the water? No. So there is no new substance. Now, heating substances, as we have already previously discussed, if I heat an iron bar, it changes its color. After cooling, it becomes into normal color. It does not form any new substance. So, here also, no new substance is formed. In all these experiments, there is no new substance formed. In all these activities, we did not find any new substance. Now, let us do this one, burning. I would request everyone not to do this. This is only for your understanding purpose I am doing. So, please don't try this at home. Now, burning. See, let me show you. If I burn this piece of paper, I'm sorry, one minute, just give me a minute. See, if I burn this paper, what happens? See, the paper is being burned and some black substances, the black substance is formed. See, something is falling down, right? See, these substances, the substance which have fallen down, that is called as ash. Means 
the paper has burned and it has formed a new substance called as ash. Can I make this ash into paper? No, I can't. So what happens over here? When burning is done, new substance is formed. Am I right? A new substance has formed. When I burn this paper, a new substance has formed. Now, growth in plants and animals. Now, uh, we, I think most of us love having small puppies. Am I right? We have small puppies. We love to have. We love watching puppies know how they play. Now, a puppy was this small when I bought it. After five or six months, it has grown into a big one. Okay, it has grown into a dog. Now, can I make this dog again into a puppy? No, I can't. Right? Am I right? This can't be changed. There is a process which is going on which can't be changed. In the same manner, now if you take this plant, growth of a plant, a small seed grows into a big tree or a plant. Am I right? When this happens, it forms new substances. When the seed is small, you can find only seed. When the seed is growing, it forms a new substance called as roots, called as leaves, called as flowers, fruits. Right? A small plant, a small seed has formed, grown into a plant and has formed many new substances. In the same way, animals. We get puppies from a lip, a dog produces puppies. Cat produces kitten. So it is producing a new substance. So, a new substance is formed over here. New substance is formed. In the same way, cooking. If you eat, a, can you eat a raw potato? No, we can't eat a raw potato. But we can make this raw potato into potato chips. Now, will these chips produce any new substance? Yeah, see the potato has produced a new substance called potato chips. Or we know french fries, we know french fries. Okay, so it is producing a new substance. Here yeah, also in cooking, new substance is formed. How these new substances are formed? We must wonder how these new substances are in form. This is because of the chemical changes which are happening. Now, if you cook, the chemical substance is present, will make the raw potato into a cooked potato or french fries. There is a chemical change. Okay? Now, we, when, when a new substance is not formed, it falls under physical changes. All the, most of the physical changes are reversible. Now, if I take a football, I can again get it back. It is a reversible change. Okay? If I get a paper, I can again get a paper back? No, it's a very reversible. So, most of the physical changes are reversible, but not some. Okay? Now, freezing of water is a reversible change. Heating a substance is a reversible change. But when a new substance is formed, then it is called as chemical changes. In a physical change, a new substance is not formed. In a chemical change, a new substance is formed. Now, if you open your textbooks, page number 64, you can find the differences between the physical change and the chemical change. Now, in the chemical change, you have to remember two words, reactants. Reactants and products. Okay? Now, what is a reactant and what is a product? The original, the original substance is called as reactant. Original substance. After undergoing this chemical reaction, what are the final substance we get? That is called as product. Substance formed after chemical reaction is called as a product. 
So now, what is a reactant? The original substance is called as a reactant and the final product after this chemical reaction it is called as product. Now, as I have burned paper, paper is a reactant. Uh, it formed ash after burning, so it is a product. Okay? Now, let us see what are the differences. Properties. Now open page number 64. In the down portion, you find a table. This one. Properties. Formation of a new substance. Physical change. No new substances are formed. The molecules of the substance remain the same before and after the change. If I take a football, it remains the same. It does not form any new substance. New in chemical changes, new substances with different properties are formed. The molecules of the substance undergo changes to form molecules of new substance. Now the molecules in the paper have undergone into change and they form a new substance having new properties called as ash. Nature of change. Most physical changes are temporary and can easily be reversed in chemical. Chemical changes are permanent and can't be reversed. I can't make this ash into paper again. Right? I can't make a cooked curry into again normal raw vegetables. So, this uh, chemical changes are irreversible. Okay? I hope you all understood what is a physical change and what is a chemical change and what are the differences between physical and chemical changes. Physical changes are, there is no new substance formed and they can be reversible. Whereas chemical changes, new substances formed and they are irreversible. Thank you.